So my name is Ryosuke Kobayashi. I was born and raised in Tokyo and currently live in Tokyo as well. I am 24. So my job is um, the executive director of an educational nonprofit called HLab. So this was the project that I started when I was 18 years old. And I felt the necessity of mentorship across borders. Um, say when I was in high school, I didn't have any mentors in college. So it was so difficult for me to pick where to go or what to study in college. And especially because I see to go abroad from Japanese high school, I didn't know anybody who'd done it before. Therefore, there's no information available about how to apply or even you know, what's the chance of getting in. So I, um, I thought about this um, creating opportunities for students to get to know students, their peers from other schools, other background, and also other generations uh, who are maybe a little bit older than them um, and do a summer school so that they can all meet and you know, sharing information from and get to know each other. So now what we do is to collaborate with the local governments in various parts of Japan and we host four summer schools over the summer. And we invite 240 high school students to participate. And at the same time, we invite about 200 um, college students as mentors from 65 universities in 13 countries. And we live together literally for, um, for two weeks. And um, there will be seminar taught by college students on the topic of their choice, whatever they're studying and passionate about, so that the students, high school students, can get to know about, uh, um, you know, to grasp the, um, the what the college education is like. And um, then in, in the afternoon we have like forums from more distinguished um, older speakers. And in the evening we invite uh, local sort of residents and variety of uh, professionals to come join us to a party and you know, kind of casually interact with each other. So it's like high school students, college students from all around the world and with the local residents communicating with each other in Japanese, English, whatever the language that we use. So that's, the, that's what the nonprofit does. Well, I'd say two people. Uh, one is, of course, my dad. Um, he is an academic. Um, he's a professor at Waseda University. It's one of the private universities in Japan. Um, and he's on robotics. It's, I know it's so Japanese, but um, um, it, so <coughs> he always told me the story of um, going abroad at, after graduating from um, you know, uh, grad school. And um, it was the first time for him to go abroad. So, but then, of course, in the world of academia, uh, the common language is English. So you know, on the top of the contents of what he does, he needed to express that to the audience around the world and he had such a difficulty. So he encouraged me to, to go abroad at some point in my life. And also he was the one, and so he was the reason why I started to uh, think in a global sort of manner and uh, decided to go to American college from Japanese local high school. And at the same time, he was also an academic as I said. So I became really interested in the field of education as well as um, how the academia is managed. And that definitely connects to what I do now. Um, a nonprofit in education. <clears throat> I would say the second person who influenced me was um, a professor that I met in college called Hiro Takeuchi. He is currently a um, professor at Harvard Business School. But um, back then, when I met him, he was the dean of a Japanese university. And well, when I decided to go abroad when I was in high school, I thought about studying international relations, say, and become a diplomat or to work for an international organization. But then he told me the story of uh, himself um, thinking of the same thing when, I was in, when he was in college. But then his wife, his wife was actually um, the daughter of one of the career diplomats in Japan. And she said no, because he was so free and he needs to, um, he really liked the life to be flexible and you know, diplomat was not the way to be. But at the same time, he's a frequent speaker in Davos, the World Economic Forum. Um, he's definitely uh, bridging Japan with other countries. Now his job at Harvard Business School is to sell or you know to promote the Japanese companies and cases um, using those you know great practices of Japanese firms um, to educate um, the, the the leaders of business in the future. So I thought you know career diplomat or working for international organization was not the only way to contribute to the international community especially bridging Japan with other countries and you know in a sense what I do now is bridge, bridging well you know bringing more a lot of students foreign students from abroad to Japan let them experience Japan for the first time 
but at the same time, they get to contribute to the local community as well as, um, as, well as to the students, the younger generation, through education. So in a way, um, you know, it's also, I think, um, bridging Japan with other countries. And I think that's something that I learned and, um, uh, from, from the college professor. A million dollar, that's a uh, million dollar. I mean, it's not that much, right? Um, but then, because of like what I do, I'd say I'll invest in education. Um, you know, there's a limited amount that we can do in education, and of course, unless we can start from a million dollar and you know r try to grow, it's it's not. I know it's not really a big amount, but at the same time, you know, uh, especially in a country like Japan or Italy or probably most of the advanced countries where population is declining, um, and you know there is limited resources available in terms of natural resources and you know um, gas and other other things, um, you know, human resources are the only sort of um, so, so we can make um, to value it, and education is what to, is a way to create a talent. So, um, you know, given the demography of Japan, I, I'd say definitely invest in education. You know, of course, there are um, various things that that'll be big in many other fields. That um, so, I let me limit the scope to to my field of education. I would say the residential education uh, will be the next big thing um, in coming 20, 30 years. Now with the emergence of MOOC, massively online, online, well, massively open online courses, most of the contents of education, for example, the classes and lectures, those things are available for free um, online. So what that means um, for educational enterprises and universities are that you know, they've been some, their business model was very simple. It's about providing those lecture and classes and get paid for that, and that was why it was called tuition. But now all those contents that they had, amazing contents, are available worldwide online for free. So a lot of um, you know people in higher education has been started thinking, well, what's the reason of paying fifty thousand dollars per year to go to college? Well, I think the answer is the community per se, the, the people who constitutes the community. So we go to college for four years, living in a dormitory together, and learn from each other rather than learning from courses. And you know, most of those um, interesting inspirational conversations happens unexpectedly, um, say past midnight, when um, you know, students from various backgrounds and you know, their mentors and professors are talking at, say, the college dining hall um, working on their respective homework, they get tired uh, after you know working on homework for like three hours, and they started talking about random things, and that's how Facebook was born. That's how, say, um, Mark. Uh, that's how Bill Gates, I think, started Microsoft. Um, so, I'd say um, the role of educational institutions will become more focused on provide a place. In Japanese, we call it ba but um, the place where people can interact and the role of them will be to facilitate the interaction that happens across many borders, many differences. So um, residential education that provides a place uh, for the participants, the students to interact with each other uh, will be the next big, big thing, I think. Um, you know, following the earlier um, topic on diversity, um, of college. I mean, our generation, the biggest difference that our generation has as compared to the prior generations were that we are all connected. And the world is far small. I mean, some people claim that the world is not becoming so flat, but still, you know, with Facebook, Twitter, and other social network, and, you know, uh, an advancement of, um, of other technology, our world is so small. Um, you know, it doesn't take two weeks to exchange mails anymore. Uh, we can just use Skype um, and conduct the same, like work on the same project at the same time, despite our location. And so that definitely um, is the biggest advantage you know we have. And you know, starting there, um, I think the question is how we can make the most use of it. And again, in, I think in the field of education, I think diversity matters a lot. Uh, we learn from differences. We are excited to learn new things because that's something that we are not familiar with. And by connecting uh, the world, uh, you know, there's 
everybody has far better access to any sort of new world that they have never imagined existing. So, um, you know, I think back again to the field of education, um, the, I think the biggest gift that we can probably uh, possibly provide for the younger, uh, the next generation. So the biggest gift that we can possibly create um, for the next generation would be sort of um, the educational environment that goes, and also working environment as well, that goes across various borders, national borders, generational borders, you know, people who can learn from each other despite where they are, where they're from, or what, they're, what kind of background they have. The smile um, of the students that I, that I, you know, I mean, touch with and how they change through our program is what's most rewarding about what I do. Um, I'd say, you know, most of the things that we do, I mean, as a startup, is very small and, you know, I have to, like, do all the operational stuff as well. But we can do it because we, we all know that it's all connected to this two-week program at the end of the summer and, you know, how the faces of students change during that time. Um, uh, the short span of two weeks is just so drastic. And of course, those students will, you know, after, after the program, they'll go back to their own life, but they'll do so many amazing things in various fields. And, you know, seeing their face change over a short period of one or two weeks and, you know, following their activities afterwards um, and, you know, see them shine um, as they find their interest and passion and work on their respective projects, like, it's so rewarding. Um, and I think that's why I'm doing my job.